Mr. Ross Bray, thank you very much for joining me Pleasure. here at the Lakeside. It's been an exciting couple of weeks for you, but Pretty leading sure. up to the Ali Pali now, your final Ali Pali, yeah. what are the emotions like? At the moment, um, the emotions obviously are going to be uh, pretty much what they are. It's the very last one I shall do at the uh, PDC World Championships with respect to that. Um, but I've got an awful lot of things coming up in the future. Um, the PDC have you know, beautifully made me a, an ambassador for them over the next coming years so that um, I've got a lot I can get my teeth into. I've got a lot of things, like I said, to look forward to. So, yeah, the emotions are finishing at the Alley Pally, which is. Uh, an amazing place to finish at the very, very top of the game. Um, I've got an awful lot to look forward to. Talk to me about that decision for yourself. You've been at the top of the game for a long, long time now. Why did it feel the right time to put, a, put an end to your sort of pro full-time professional career? Yeah, that's, that's a very good question. Um, what it is, I'm 66 now, so I'll get my old age pension. <laughs> so uh, getting my old age pension now, it's um, my wife retires in January as well. Mm -hmm. She's just going to do a day a week just to keep herself ticking over to stop any form of boredom or, so, you know, so she's got something to do. Um, so, uh, so the pair of us have a little bit more time together to be able to go and do things that we want to do and, you know, and then retire gently, you know, and to, and to retire at at the uh, Ali Pali calling the world final is uh, probably just about perfect. Yeah, I think perfect is the right way to put it. Who do you expect to be on that stage on the 3rd of January? <laughs> There's a 64 Apart from million. yourself. Exactly. <laughs> I, I know I'm going to be there. Uh, the $64 million question is, I, I, I couldn't tell you. I tell you for why, because, you know, you've got... Um, Magnificent dark players in depth. You've got your usual suspects, as you would always have. You know, Michael Van Gogh in, Gogh in Price, Peter Wright, Michael Smith, um, and obviously Luke Humphreys at the moment, who's absolutely on fire. So these are the sort of guys that, you know, you're expecting to be up there. Um, but in all honesty, the World Championships always throws up somebody from somewhere who's not expected. So, uh, as I say, from me, from my perspective, I don't really, I don't mind who's in the final because at the end of the day, as long as it'll be an absolute cracker, then, uh, you know, happy days. But to actually predict who could be there, uh, certainly any any one of, oh, jeepers, you know, 16, 32, definitely. We know it's the end of the, the full-time refereeing career, but we'll st we will still be seeing you on the World Series. You'll still be over at the Asian Tour, is that correct? That's absolutely correct, yeah. I'll be doing the World Series at Bahrain, New York and Australia and also be doing the Asian tour which we've got um, we've got actually eight Asian tours themselves with three tournaments on each with 24 tournaments there um, plus we have the Asian Championship at the end of the year so uh, I've still got a busy year but uh, you know I've still got a bit of time so uh, obviously I've got I've had a lot of other offers coming in um, going out to Costa Rica going to India um, and all these sort of places. So uh, I'll still be about, you'll still see me about, but uh, just not so much at the majors. Is it going to be a bit weird having a weekend free when you're not travelling to Minehead or Milton Keynes <laughs> or London or wherever? You're not kidding. It's uh, <laughs> It's been 28 years that I really haven't had a, you know, a, a, a particular weekend off as such. So yeah, I, it, it will be a little bit strange, I'm sure, but I'm sure, I'm sure I'll, have a, I'll be having plenty to do. I'm sure you will. And something that keeps you busy and keeps you in the dark circle or things like exhibitions. I know you're yep. keen to continue doing that sort of thing. Oh, very much so, very much so. And, and the beauty is now, again, I'll have a lot more time to do a lot more exhibitions, a lot more other things. Uh, there's a company called Fair Play that, you know, I'm going to go and do some filming with them on the 6th of December. They're, um, you know, a, a company that are putting together like a, a betting style of act where you can bet against each other and things like that. So myself and Wayne Mardle are going to be filming for them for the day. So you've got things like that. You've got things like galas over in Germany, exhibitions and, and such like. So, uh, and I worked with Keith Deller, the 1983 champion of the world, 40 years ago. He's been going, we've been working over 20 years. Um, we've still got an awful lot of corporate and an awful lot of exhibitions that we do. So, um, although in inverted commas you know the word retirement comes in there I think you know a semi-retirement would probably be a better way of putting it um, but I should still be fully hands on. You mentioned some of the amazing countries that you've had the chance to visit and I'm sure some more that you'll be visiting in your semi-retirement what are the favourite ones that you've had the chance to, to visit? Well I tell you um, I've been very lucky to have gone all four corners I'm in um, Johannesburg 
I mean, Cape Town um, in South Africa, Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide, you know, Perth in Australia. So I've sort of covered pretty much the bases out there. Um, obviously, all of Asia. The only place I haven't done in Asia is Vietnam and Cambodia and Indonesia. But the rest of Asia, I also be going to, and I've been to. Um, so I've been very, very lucky to be able to go to so many different cities and countries, um, see the different cultures, and uh, see the different way of dance. Especially in somewhere, if you take somewhere like Mongolia, which is uh, I'm out there again in April, I think it is. Yeah. Um, but that'd be my third time into Mongolia, and the dance enthusiasm out there when you think of the populace which is oh no, just over a million or something silly like that you know to the land mass and we had 600 players at a tournament you know it's it's quite incredible and the standard the standard in Asia uh, in itself let alone Mongolia is getting higher and higher and higher and uh, watch this space for someone doing something special from Asia very soon yeah, I was keeping an eye on the, the JDC World Championship and there's 13, 14-year-olds throwing 85, 86 average from Mongolia. And you've, yes. you've obviously never heard of them, but it's incredible the talent that's coming out of these countries and you think in five, ten years' time there's going to be some serious players coming Absolutely. from Absolutely. The first time I... The first match I called in, in Mongolia a couple of years back was the boys, called the boys game, mm. the best of the five. And uh, the young lad went up there and the very first call and the very first throw that I ever had in Mongolia was 171. He went treble 19, treble 19, treble 19. I thought, wow. I mean, the lad, I think he lost 5-2 in the end. But the average on that was something like 83, 84, yeah. you know. And this is kids. And when I say kids, I'm talking about kids are 12-year-old, you know. It was, it was incredible. It was a real eye-opener because of the talent that's out there and out in Asia in general. Um, but the talent there in Mongolia, it, it was quite incredible. Yeah. How is the talent pool generally? I mean, Luke Littler is a name that springs to mind. 16 years of age on the tour, hitting 100 plus averages for fun. It's a completely different game now from when it was even 10 years ago. Oh yeah, yeah. The game's changed massively. Um, the beauty is a lot of the, a lot of the guys and girls out there now can see the, the, the beauty of what they're what they can achieve, what they can win. Um, you know, the money's going up all the time. There's lots of tournaments for them to be in, the development tour, the challenge tour, plus the PDC Euro Tour, plus the PDC Tour itself. And then also when you start talking about your county level of darts and all that sort of thing coming up, darts in, uh, darts in general throughout the world is absolutely in a fabulous, fabulous place. It really is. And the, the guys and girls are getting better. Phil Taylor set a benchmark, or Eric Bristow set a benchmark back in the 80s. Phil Taylor took that benchmark and set it even higher. And the guys and girls now are hitting that benchmark, but a lot more in depth and a lot more people are doing it. And that is why darts is on a massive, massive roller coaster. It really is. And it's just getting faster and faster and bigger and bigger. So your tournaments now, when you go to a tournament, it isn't, oh, so-and-so's going to win it. It's going to be any one of can win it and it's getting bigger and better in depth and that's the beauty and my job now hopefully with the PDC as an ambassador I will go around preach the word and you know go and find more and, and bigger better talent no, Russ thank you very much for your time and best of luck in your semi-retirement thank you so much I appreciate it thank you